a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was born from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat, but if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But this was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord The hour has come. In the Gospel reading, Jesus is aware that the hour has come. It is the hour of His return to the Father, the hour of His glorification. But inasmuch as this will involve suffering and death, Jesus is troubled. But He knows exactly that this is the way, and so instead of praying that the chalice of suffering may pass Him by, He says, Father, glorify Your name. The Father's glory will be manifested by Jesus in loving His disciples, in fact, all people, to the very end. To reveal the mystery of His passion and glorification, Jesus uses the similitude parable of the grain of wheat, only until it falls to the ground and dies, buried in the soil, will it produce much fruit. Jesus is like the grain of wheat. In his earthly life, he is constrained by biological and historical limitations, but in death and in his resurrection, his life will have a universal dimension. He will effect the salvation of humanity. This is also the parable of human life. Nationalists and patriots turn influential when they die as martyrs. Tertullian writes that the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christianity. In the Philippines, the death of Dr. Jose Rizal produced revulsion among the Filipinos and strengthened the revolution against Spain to seek for freedom. What Rizal had not done while alive was accomplished by his martyrdom. But Jesus is more than martyrs and heroes who conquered by their example. These people continue to live, but only in memory. Jesus rose from the dead and as a glorious Lord, guarantees the good deeds are not interred with the bones of the dead. He guarantees that the righteous are alive in him. He likewise guarantees that the other seed that fall on the ground and die in the name of love will produce an abundant harvest.